master, the master of the servant was moved with compassion, released him and gave him the debt. Do you know when you are holding grudge or you are bitter against somebody, somebody owns you, 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 you the two of you, you are always, you, there's no way you are holding him bondage and you will be free. You are holding him. You saw how Onipenia came out with the, <laughs> with the woman that owned him. Because you are stuck. You are tied. You have tied yourself to him or her. So wherever he goes, he goes. Beloved, your enemies or those who have hurt you, those who have wounded you, they don't need be, to be around you to control your life. Wherever they are, they can control you. Wherever your offenders are, they can control you. Why? Because you are brooding over it. You are meditating over it. You are scheming. You are planning what to do to them and their family. You are wishing them bad. You are wishing them evil. So, you, you, instead of you being focused on a positive thinking, you are focusing on the negativity. Evil that will happen to them. You are, that's what you've been thinking of. So, you abandon. So, you put yourself. You jeopardize your own life. Your health. Your peace, your emotions are damaged. Your emotions are bruised. You hurting yourself. When we, we, we cannot let go. You tie yourself to the person who owns you. The person who is, you are hurt to. Hmm. Him. Kajo. Hmm. Thomas. Hmm. Grace. Hmm. Then you sign. You keep on signing. You keep on signing. You keep on signing. And it's affecting you, depressing you, suppressing you, oppressing you, bringing all kinds of sicknesses and disease, affecting your actions and attitude and behavior pattern. It affects the entire body. It damages you and affects your behavior. And it involves so many people. Now, it's affecting the, 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 the person, the king, will affect because he's holding on. Give me until you pay. If you don't pay me, I will not. Until he consciously said, let go, go. Until he lose him and he left. He said, on time, he had compassion. Move with compassion. Have put himself in his place. When we do that, we put ourselves in his place. It's an obligation they can never fulfill. So we should let them do it. We should let go. Praise the Lord. We should allow them set them free. But that servant went. So his fellow servant but that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owned him a hundred denarii. A hundred denarii, they say is a um, hundred days wages. Compared to that, they said that is ten thousand pounds. Compared to the ten million. That is what he owned him. And he laid hands on him. First of all, he laid hands on him. Took him by the throat. When you cannot forgive somebody, the throat holding him like choking him. Another version says he was, he choked him. He was choking him. He held him by the throat and then choking him. The Greek word for that means inhaling and exhaling. Like to inhale something. So when he's choking him, the man cannot breathe. Could not breathe. He's choking him. So you, instead of him breathing out, you have held his, the throat. You don't want him to breathe out. So you are killing the person. Yeah, so if you cannot let go, you are choking the person. You yourself, because you are stuck with him. Because you are, wherever he goes, he's controlling your destiny. He's controlling your life. Choking the man. The clemency he did not. He received from the judge or the king. He demanded accountability. He demanded, pay me back what you owe me. If you don't, owe, don't pay me, I will not let you go. Lay hands on him. Took him by the throat. Pay me what you owe. Pay me. You are demanding the pinhead they owe you. I'm demanding the pin here they own me. But for your own good, it's better you let go. Amen. I said for your own good. So the fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you all. Is that not the exact words he pleaded with the master? 
So the fellow servant also pleaded with him. The same way. The same way. So much have been forgiven us, but we cannot let go. And he would not, but went and threw him into prison till he should pay the debt. Until he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what had happened, had been, had done, had been done, they were very grieved and came and told the master all that had been done. You see, when we go through this situation, it affects so many people. It affects people around us. It affects so many people. People become sad, dwindle. People cannot flow when these things are going on. It's the play of the enemy. I said nothing grows in the atmosphere of bitterness. Nothing grows. Atmosphere of resentment and confusion. Nothing grows. Nothing flourishes. So the master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. You see, there is a bridge called forgiveness. And anyone who cannot forgive, you are broken, you break that bridge down. So you don't want anybody to travel on it. By a time will come, you will need to travel on it. But you are broken the bridge down. This one has broken the bridge of forgiveness down. A time has come he wants to travel to the other end. But he has broken it down. Where is he going to get a bridge to travel on? But there's a big river. How is he going to travel? He has broken the bridge down. So let's look at it from this point of view. If we cannot forgive, we have broken the bridge of forgiveness down. Hallelujah. I mean, you know, I, I, when we we cannot forgive. We are, we are like men. We criticize. But when we, we, we fight one another, we are like animals. But when we forgive, we are like God. Amen. We are like God. So the judge is very furious. They reported it to him. Should you not also have compassion on your fellow servants just as I had pity on you? And his master was very angry and delivered him to the torturers, torturers until he should pay all that was due to him. That's what we saw, we saw here. So my, listen to this. So my heavenly father, this is Jesus giving this parable. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart it's not by mouth, oh, it's by heart. By our attitude, our behavior. My father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother his trespasses. He will do to you. This is what my heavenly father will do. You see, it's the only unpardonable sin apart from sinning against the Holy Spirit. The next sin which is unpardonable it's bitterness. It's unforgiveness. Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Bible tells us that it said, if you do not forgive, I, the Lord, will also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. Period. So, many prayers have gone unanswered because we don't go before God with a clear heart, with a pure heart. The heart is wounded. The heart is, is pain and is polluted before the living God. So he said, don't come to me if you know the heart is not clean. You have open cells and put people in. You are angry with people. You are resentful. You are bitter. You are callous. You are wishing them evil in your heart. That he said, if you cannot, when you stand praying, and that one means you will do it, it's not conditional. As a child of God, or people who are, do you know unbelievers, if they even pray? Do you know unbelievers pray? Those who even don't know Jesus, they pray, don't they? Even before he became born again, didn't you used to pray? Oh, I pray. Oh, Father, oh, God, God. This all prayer, we make our little prayer, so even before we became born again. But as people of God, you cannot afford not to pray. 
And one of the major barriers and hindrance to prayers, our prayers, is unforgiving spirit. Bitter hearts, polluted hearts, when you go before him. You will not be able, he said, if you stand praying, don't do that. If you are standing, oh God, my daughter, my son, my father, my daddy, my business, my documents at the home office, my this, my dad, God, oh God, I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. But at the back of your mind, you are holding grace. You have tied grace up. You have tied Kwame up. You have tied Kwaku up. You have tied every anybody that you are angry with. You have tied him up. And the Holy Spirit says, lose him. Lose him. Lose her. Lose him. Lose her. I don't know your prayers. I will not answer. Hallelujah. That's one thing we need to learn. Praise the Lord. If we are not able to learn this, I want you to know forgiveness is not a deleted memory. Many, the reason why it's so difficult for us to for, forgive is that we think people are saying, forgive and forget. Beloved, I want everybody to understand this. You, there's no way you'll be able to forget. I'm telling you. Anybody who tells you, forgive and forget. Why? Let me give this analogy. You can, I've had a nasty cut. Let's say I have a, a scar here. This scar. All right. A needle scratched me and it became a sore. In the night, it was so painful. So look at it. Have imagine, imagination. Hand things catch you when you have a nasty cut with a knife, anything. A nail or something cuts you. In the middle of the night, you have fever. You are cold. You are chilled. Painful. You cannot sleep. The same way bitterness does to us. So it is a wound. First of all, it's an injury. And then you become a wound and it becomes so painful in the night. You want to address it. You want to put um, ointment in it. You want to address it. Do it all kinds of but you Sleepless night. So painful. But gradually in the course of time, in the course of time, it will be healing. In the course of time, the wound will be healing. In the course of time, it will be healing. Eventually, it will heal. When it is healed, it becomes what? A scar. Do we, when we see a scar, do you forget what happened? I said, when you see the scar, I know how I got this. This one here, I know how. I got it. I know it. Some people, a couple were fighting. We went, they called us, we went to their house. <laughs> and the, the mattress had a pin, a sharp pin. They were throwing, he was moving out. All kinds of things went on. And the mattress, you know, the wire, those wine in it, scratched me and it became so, so painful. It took some time. I experienced the pain. But finally, it went away. It was healed. But when it was healed, it left the scar. Have you seen the scar? Anytime I see it, I know what happened. I remember. It reminds me. I recollect how I got that. Does it mean I have not forgiven? I've forgiven. But the scar is reminding me. When you see the person, you laugh. You have forgiven. But hey, he's the guy. He's a man. He's a woman. But your heart, forgive from the heart. So forgiveness is not a deleted memory. Praise the Lord. It does not justify what the person has done against you. It does not condone what he did. It does not compromise. It does not mean you, are, you have set him free and then he's free forever. I told you, he has to seek or she has to seek the forgiveness from the Lord. Whether he pleaded, he pleads or he doesn't. It's up to him. It's his responsibility or her responsibility to seek forgiveness from God. Because you remember we learned, woe unto anyone who offends one of these. Woe. And 2 Thessalonians 1.6 also tells us, 2 Thessalonians 1.6. The Bible tells us that 
It is a righteous thing for God to pay with tribulation. They have troubled his children. It's scripture. So if you keep on fighting, if you want to fight, God will not fight for you. That's one thing I want you to understand. Our part, our role, our responsibility is to let go freely from our hearts. And we lose ourselves. It takes greatness to forgive. Let's look at Joseph. When you go to the Bible, from Genesis 39, his siblings coquetted a plot and did all kinds of evil because he was a loving son of his father. But it was the heart of Joseph. He had a heart that fears God. Joseph had a heart of fearing God. He feared God. The scriptures his father taught him was teaching him. He feared God. So they, they plotted, they, they conspired, and first they put him in a pit. They said, here comes the dreamer. We will sell him. We will do this. Eventually, they wanted him to kill him. But as God will have it, they moved him from the pit, sold him to the Ishmaelites, his cousins. He also sold him to Potiphar in Egypt. Joseph got to Egypt. As if the slavery was not enough. As if from the pit was not enough, he'd been sold in slavery. Now, he's been put in Potiphar's house. Now, Mrs. Potiphar is also eyeing him. Mrs. Potiphar wants to put this man into trouble. The Bible says, day after day, Mrs. Potiphar was after this young man. And verse 30, chapter 39 from 9 and 10, the Bible says he got hold of him. Decided every day the guy would refuse. He refused. No, I can't do such a thing. No, no, no. And he would run. He would run. Bible tells us, flee sexual immorality. The only thing Bible tells us to flee. He said, flee it. Flee sexual immorality. When he said that, the guy said, he fled all the time. Anytime he said, then finally he took hold of his cloth. They call it his coat or his wrapper. He took it from, the first coat has been taken from his brothers. The brothers took his coat and then Mrs. Potiphar has taken the second coat. It's better to lose your coat than to lose your conscience. He ran and left his coat in the hand of the woman. And the woman screamed. Said, he has brought a Hebrew boy to come and rape me. And, and defile me. He did. Who would believe the report of a slave? It was between the two of them. But the righteous judge was there. Amen. I said the righteous judge was there. Amen. Beloved, at times it's so painful to us. I haven't done this and they're blaming me. They're accusing me of. They're peddling falsehood about me. They're doing all kinds of evil. I've been abused. I've been rejected. I've been lied upon. I've been maligned. All kinds of things. I've been, somebody has squandered my money. And all kinds of things happening. Imagine your own siblings, your own children, the people, your mother, your father. All these people rise up against you. Disowning you. It's painful. But Joseph, the brothers have betrayed him. They've sold him into slavery. He has ended up in Mrs. Potiphar's house. Now this woman has falsely also accused him. A false witness against him. Nobody was there to defend Joseph, but God was there. Amen. The Holy Spirit was there. Amen. Beloved, it doesn't matter what has been done against you. People are accusing you of. The Lord knows. Yes. He knows the truth. He knows all. At times, he permits things to happen to train you and toughen you. Amen. He allows things to happen to our lives so that we will know the path we need to take. Beloved, there are some people who are, you see, people are like scaffolding. When you are putting up a building, we put scaffolding around it to hold things together. When they finish it, to see the beauty of the building, they take off the scaffolding. That's how some people are. At times we get so painful, we get so angry and bitter. And even if we don't take care against God. Why have you allowed this? But God has allowed that to come in to move that person out of your life. 
There are some people, that's how God has made it. The same way people are like um, escalators. You know escalator and then elevators. They take you up or they take you down. So you watch who is taking you up and who is taking you down. You need the discernment of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Joseph has been bruised, has been hurt so much. Nobody to defend him. So he ended up in prison. A sin he did not commit. But look at the statement he made. Genesis 39. Now he said when the woman held the garment, he said, how can I do such a wicked thing against my God? How can I? He wasn't sinning against Mr. Potiphar. Potiphar was not there. You know, the enemy will make sure he creates an environment and an atmosphere for you to sin. Nobody was there apart from the two of them. So they must say, nobody said. He said, no, the servant, go here, go here, you go here. So that he made sure the place is free for the two of them to do their evil act. But the guy who fears God, how can I do such a wicked thing against my God? If nobody sees, God sees. The sin he did not commit, they put him into prison. God put him there to learn the palace protocol. To meet those servants. The servants of the king. The cup bearer and then the the cup bearer and the baker. Eventually they had dreams. Beloved, as he was put into prison, the door opened and increased and his spiritual giftings was enhanced. At times you go through things, you draw closer to God. You pray the more. So God blesses you. He is enhances your spiritual giftings. So he is, his revelation, the guy was able. His giftings was improved and then he was able to tell them to inter interpret their dreams. Safania Patnea. He was interpreted their dream for them. And all of a sudden, they were released. He told them, when you go, remember me. He told the cup bearer. The baker, of course, was killed. As he had a dream, he was killed. And then the cup bearer went home, free to continue his services to the king. But when he was going, Genesis 41, 40, 30, he told him, when you go, remember me. Because I have done nothing. I don't know why I'm here. I've done nothing. 40, 13, he said, I've done nothing. But the guy forgot Joseph. But Joseph was not bitter. The guy forgot Joseph. He was not bitter against his brothers. He was not bitter against the cabbara. He was not bitter against the taskmasters who were beating him, kicking him. He was not bitter. The guy forgot him over two years. He was so there. Never remember. Beloved, until the time is up for God's purpose to be fulfilled, you'll be forgotten. I said, you'll be forgotten. If he had, the guy had reminded or had told him of Joseph, maybe he would have been the chief cup bearer. That was mostly the position there for him. But because it wasn't God's time for him and God's appointment for Joseph, God's plan for him, he delayed, he made the cup bearer forget him. He forgot completely about him. Until the appointed time, the Lord gave a dream to Pharaoh. And they needed him. Genesis 41. When you start from 14 to 6, 14 going down. He said, and he sent for Joseph quickly to be released from the dungeon. He sent for Joseph. There's an agency coming for your life. There's an agency coming into your life. What God has said for you, the time is up. There's an agency coming. You are going to rise up to that place of prominence. You are going to be catapulted to a place of prominence, a place of not nobility. That place God has ordained for you will surely come to pass at the appointed time. Wait on God. He's working behind the scene. Our God who has begun a good work, he will bring you to a perfect end. Hallelujah. Don't be downcast. I've been waiting and waiting. This guy disappointed me. This woman disappointed me. I'm, I should have been married by now. He, has he is not a guy for you. She is not the woman for you. God allow it to happen. Because he has somebody better for you. That's how you should be. Amen. That house you are not able to buy. God has a plan for you. Glory be to God. Finally, 
Joseph brethren, Joseph gave, um, when the, the, the Pharaoh had a dream, they called him to interpret it. He came. He was brought from the prison. He interpreted skillfully. And the king said, chapter 41, how? Is there anybody with the spirit of God wiser than this man? There's nobody. Because he prescribed a 14 year economic plan. There will be seven years farming and there will be seven years a plenty. The plenty will come first. So save food for the first plenty years. And then you feed yourself. He said, is anybody wiser than this man? Somebody who had the spirit of God in him than any of us. It's him. That was the time of prominence. That was his time. Now he's promoted. It has happened. Everything he prophesied or the interpretation of dream came to pass. When it came to pass and then seven years complete. Precious audience, I trust you have been deeply blessed and totally transformed in your mind because you have had I've heard this message, you've watched this forgiveness of sin. Precious one, to forgive is like releasing someone from prison. And at the end of the day, you discover that you were the prisoner. You need this emotional, emotional healing. Make a conscious effort to let go of the past, of any bitterness, any rancor in your heart. Let go. And I trust by the grace of God, you have your, you sense your peace and your joy in the name of Jesus. So you say this after me, Father, grant me the grace to forgive and let go of everyone who has hurt me and have wounded me. And I lose myself from every shackle by your grace in Jesus' name. And those who listen to me who don't know Jesus, this opportunity is for you. Confess Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Come unto Jesus and then you can live again. Confess him as your Lord and personal Savior. Come along to Christ the kingdom in your place where the word of God is preached and taught and the love of God is shared abroad. Bless you. The information underneath gets intact and come. If you need counseling, we are there for you. Bless you. Get the book, drop the charges. Bless you.